One. Good evening. Good afternoon. We're here on a Friday afternoon, uh, a few hours before Shabbat. We thought we'd uh, get in a league recap of what we're doing, what's going on, some trades we had happening yet again. Wow. Uh, we had two amazing matchups this week. Quickly and, talk about that. And, and then at the end, which I want you all to stay tuned for, we want to break down the exciting rookies. There's over a dozen rookies this year that joined the league, and almost every single one of them are a real big impact on their teams in a positive way. Right, and uh, helping trades happen and whatnot. We'll talk about it. Let's jump right in. First matchup this past week right. was the Pirates' first time stepping onto the field. So the Pirates, as we knew uh, when, we, when we went into the previous, uh, when we went to the season preview. I don't know if you could hear us on the beach that day, but. We weren't a big fan of the Pirate team, and uh, we, we thought they were a little weak. They did help themselves via trade. They um, did. And, and then David uh, Farka and Morris Cass, and they got the short end of the deal simply because Morris Cassin or Fulai Shilema tore everything up in his name. Yeah, so I just want to touch on that quickly. Morris was actually very excited about his team, and uh, like Max said, playing football. He was excited to play shortstop, too. Right. He was very pumped up to play short. In playing the, uh, football on a Tuesday night. He just uh, got his knee taken out from underneath him. He tore his ACL, his MCL, his PCL, all the CLs there are to tear. He tore him. Rafael Shalom Mars, we love you and feel better, and we hope yes. to see you again next year. I believe his wife put down, laid down the law and said no more football. No more football, only, only softball. MS baseball. That's it. That's it. It's fine by us. So, either way, so they lost him and they picked, but picked they up. But they picked up a very good shortstop, somebody familiar with our league, their brother, his brother, uh, very familiar with the league, Shimmy Cohen's brother. Butchie Cohen. Right, so Butchie was, is not a rookie. Butchie played on the Toronto Blue right. Jays team, but that team... One of the worst teams in no, league history. Well, when you look at, in, in the pantheon of horrible teams, the Mount Rushmore of horrible teams in the league... It's there. Toronto Blue Jays has got to be the top four. Yeah. That was captained by Jimmy Malach, yes. I believe. And, then and, one of, and one of the reasons it was one of the horrible teams, because it had so much talent on it. Right, and it just, just, it just never, it just never came into fruition. Now. So Butchie is a new Butchie. He's 40 pounds lighter. He no longer is Butchie. He's skinny yeah, now. So, exactly. He's not so Butchie. So Butchie... Skinny he, Cohen, we'll call him. He's been playing very well in his other leagues he plays in, in the in the, in the South right. Jersey League. Right. And uh, he, came to the, he came to the field the other night, and he, he was a star. He was good. He played shortstop. Uh, they want him to be a little bit more vocal, but he played a very solid shortstop. He's got a very solid arm. You can't create a personality that's not there. Okay. If you're not and a vocal guy, you're not a vocal guy. He goes guy. to all fields with his bat now. Going so, to right field, to so, left field. That, so maybe that actually, that unfortunately they lost Mars, but if they gain a real shortstop there, that it actually could be. Because the jury was out on Mars defensively, at sure. We're not saying he couldn't do it, but he never did do it. Right. And they picked up David Farka. Unfortunately, week one, he couldn't make it. That right. He had but, some uh, travel issues. I think right. he missed his connector flight, and he couldn't okay. make it. Well, all that being said, Natan, his first time being captain, uh, you could see he was a little wet behind the ears. So from what I heard that he really wasn't ready for those responsibilities off the bat to start. He didn't realize what it takes, but he's ready going forward because he was even ready by the end of game two. It just took him a little time. So I don't know what happened. You didn't really discuss it with me off camera. So Not tell much. me now. There so, was some sort of fireworks that went down. I'd uh, like to hear you tell me about it. Something so, with Maurice, with Rusamano, with well, Mark Owen. Knowing, that, knowing Maurice Haber, who played third base the other night, it's um, a blast from the past. And he yeah, hasn't done that. In he a while. held his own. He did well, but I thought he moved no, permanently to first base. He did. David Schrem also was on injured. Uh, is on the injured list. He'll be back next week. Okay. So they had David uh, Schrem. Uh, I respect the captains that don't beg for subs when they know they can make do with their ten. Yeah, I wish every captain did that. And uh, Maurice played a very good third. They played with their ten. Uh, Mark Cohen on the field, the newly invented Mark Cohen. So how many times do we say that? Well, it's already five, four years now. No, but so he's more. not newly invented. So he's, he's this is the Mark Cohen, Cohen we know. He, I think he's here to stay. Uh, as we know, he's effectively wild. He will probably lead the league in the, hits the big batman. three. Hit batman, hit, hits batsman, walks, and, and, strike. and potentially strikeouts. I don't think yeah. Mark knows where the ball goes half the time, but that's a good thing. So Mark, I even think made himself a little bit of a better pitcher, if that's possible. And the reason I'm saying that is now, from what I watched, he's changing speeds. He has a changeup in his arsenal. So a if slow I flip changeup. I did not see this. If that's the case and he could actually harness that where he wants it to go, that makes Mark Cohen the next level Mark Cohen. He's, he really, when he's on his game, he's, I could say, the hardest pitcher to hit. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe even the whole community, but in our league, for I sure. think the secret when is he's go, on his game. I think the secret is just go the other way because yeah. it's pitches as a, if you're if you're a righty tail away from you, and if you just look the other way, it might be actually easier to hit. Well, Sorry, Mark, if I gave away a trade secret over there. Well, game one, Mark was on his game so much so that they had a two one lead in the fifth. Um, two one lead in the fifth, the biggest spot in the game we didn't talk about. Bobby Safty in left field. Shimmy Cohen came up with first and second and two outs. And Shimmy had an explosion come off his bat down the left field line. A shot. Bobby Safty had to cover a lot of ground and then dive and make a ridiculous diving catch. So from the few people that I spoke to that were at the game, they said the sheer amount of real estate that Bobby just covered from where he went from really A to point B, uh, they said it was really up there with the best of him. Uh, up there with 10 years ago, Ali Marshall in center field. Up there play. with uh, ABJ Cohen. It looked plays. like he was possessed when the ball was hit. Like, I'm getting it. I like think Bobby it. always looks like he's possessed. <laughs> I hear that. Now, he made another great play earlier in the game. And then when the score was only 2-1. to one, Very close game. The Pirates had the lead. Natan Safdie came through with a clutch. Uh, two out, triple to go up 4-1. It was to go up 3-1, then he came home on a sack fly or something. Right. And then you said Bobby really made the difference in the field, and that time got the big hits. And then Bobby got some big hits, too. Bobby was swinging. Bobby came to play. But um, what should I call it? They ended up going up 4-1. They ended up finishing the game 4-2. The other team scored. And then game two. Game so Baltimore two. was a totally yes, different story. Baltimore just came up, hit Mark. His control wasn't the same. And I will say that Yosef Safdie... Who was one of the rookies? We'll, we'll get to that later. We're gonna have a, yeah. a, a segment after we recap the game. But they did the pick on the right field side. He also had a troublesome game in right field. I don't know if it was a one-time bad game where he wasn't ready, maybe getting used to the lights, or he's just maybe the jury's out on Joseph Safdie. Maybe. So we'll find out. <clears throat> that was a nine-three Oreo win. A very even split. I know two games. Two totally different games, but this but you is know, a game. the way the, the, the imbalanced schedule is presently constituted, the Orioles are in first place right now. That's correct. That's so, three one. Yeah, so uh, but this pirate team showed me that they're not just that team that we thought's gonna not fly out. stink, right. I don't know who's gonna be that last place team. And then the next day was an epic. So the next day I, I'll tell you, it was it really people come into the games against this Brewer team and they don't take them seriously. I witnessed it firsthand. And guess what, guys? You're making a tremendous mistake. I'll tell you, all the teams are agreeing now. The Bill Beano. I'll start with starting pitcher. Eddie Nisim has established himself to be, in my opinion, a top three pitcher in this league. Uh, you could debate the order. We'll have the Hannon, Yadid. I think Eddie Nisim is right there. Eddie Nisim has control, doesn't walk anybody. You could see in last night or the other night, he had like three walks in like over 18 innings. And he, he doesn't strike guys out. But he def- definitely places the ball. He has a changeup. He has a riser. He has a funky pitch where he throws like that. I'm a big Eddie Nisim fan, and as we know, he is the reigning Gold Glove winning pitcher. Anything up the middle oh, doesn't that's, get me that's for sure. You want to say Mark Cohen, Ralph? Hatton, nothing, Hatton, nothing Hatton, doing. He's the best pitcher defensively. I'll tell you what it is. He's, the he's an athlete. He he yeah. he's a P90X grad. He's an Insanity grad. He's a he's a freak athlete, and he and he, and he really shows all athletic ability on the mound. And now behind him, the defense. Everywhere is solid. They show up their defense. Young bunch of kids starting at well it depends if whoever shows up on the night like the other night Modi wasn't there, but Zolta was at third, Sammy Shama was at short, you had uh, uh I forget who was at second, you have Sabog out there, you have uh, Joe Greenberg in center and Al D Al D in left. Isaac they're, Dweck. They're, they're, yeah, Mo, Isaac was at first, you have Sammy Red playing first, depends who what where when. They really, really, really are a good defensive team. I'm not going to say they're great hitters. They have a few good hitters in the middle of the lineup, like Greenberg, etc. But they have a lot of but, speed and pesky type hitters. No, and and, and they normal. also, they know no quit. They have a good chemistry. Uh, game one started. Uh, what happened was, I, I got to hand it to them. They, they really came out really looking good. They well, were they, really were down, they were down one nothing. Correct. But they didn't get frazzled whatsoever. They came up and put up four. So. Right, they put up a four spot. And uh, that was it. They won game one by a score of 4-1. to one. So They Even shut down. Game, and look who they shut down. They shut down Ali, Sabon. I don't care if you're saying they're getting long on the tooth. They're still Ali and Sabon. Elliot they, Sacco. Elliot Sacco, yeah. Charles Sacco. Sacco. They have a good team, that team. Yeah. And they made them look listless. They didn't look as... The, the names on Loudon, paper? Nathan Kushner. These guys can swing the Kushner, bat. Like, Kushner was a really good hitter. Yeah, he is a good hitter. Um, they just... They, they just didn't... They just couldn't put any hits together. If you look at the box score, it was like, I can't believe it. 
Game one. Maxi Deed also has a hitter in this So Maxi Deed, stuff. for some reason, we'll get to that real quickly right now. In the MS Night League, Maxi Deed is a bona fide hitter. He bats over a 500 every single year, Amazing. sometimes How more. Other leagues and guess game. what? He'll let you know about it everywhere he goes. Don't worry, I know. Check his Snapchat right now. Maxi Deed just snapped out his stats from the website. True story. Okay, so now, now, game one, that was game one. So now, just to know, everybody knew it, and it was buzzing around town. Tigers were 0 3. Yeah, so Tigers were 0 3, and guess what? If they were to fell 0 4 in our schedule the way it is, I don't Scary. think they would. I don't think they would have been able to well, climb out needed, and claw out of the hole. They would have so. needed two sweeps, and that's not something which is pretty know. difficult. So game two comes out, and uh, it, it was one of the wildest games. They were. Uh, we'll just skip to the end of this game. Yeah. They were down three runs in the bottom of the seventh inning, and they just decided Kushner started off with a big hit to left field. Um, started up. Nice. Abu Gai had a big hit, and push comes to shove. It came down to Ali Marshall down by two uh, with Basically. two out. We'll go back a little bit. JoJo made me had a hot shot in the hole that Shama almost ended the game on a diving stop, but, wow, but Zolta not, couldn't hold on at third base. Not an easy play. Check the highlights for exactly what I'm talking what about. What a stop by Sammy Shama. But either way, it got up Ali Marshall. He hit a two-run double, vintage Ali Marshall style. Right center And then right. they walked Saban. You did could not end it. Fast forward to the ninth. They went down by one after Mikey Shama had an RBI on the top of the ninth. They almost were about to lose again, go down 0-4 again. That's and something then, we'll talk about, Mikey Shannon. And then Saban did what Saban does best. He laced the ball down the left field line, and then Max did hit a walk-off, and you could see in the highlights once again, they were celebrating like it was 1999. It was oh, amazing. They were right, and they were right right on it. They're 1-3 and three now, right back into the home with and, everybody. And they got it, it was such a good uh, feeling win for them because they, yeah. they, they came back, blew it, came back and won again. They right now feel like they're up there with the first place team, even so, though you could swap records three and one, one and three. They think they're right in it. So now um, connecting right to our next segment. So now we'll do this. Really, I want to. I want to do this in a different way. We discussed. I want to do this rapid fire. I'm going to say the name. Wait, no. Trump did a trade. Oh, okay, one okay. of the reasons a trade happened was because Joe Mamie subbed for Chaz. Right. That's who we subbed. And for. then Matthew said, "Oh, this kid could play the infield." I like this kid. So and also uh, another reason for the trade, Ruby Sack had an oh, opportunity to play to left it. field, and he He's, was the kid is dynamite out there. He's yeah, literally he's up there with anybody. So now Joe Mamie, who we called electric, he maybe didn't play to his full potential, but Maxi D, he saw Ali he could Marshall, play. they saw he could play. We need an infielder. They made the trade on the spot. He made the trade with Isaac Nolan. So now. We just recap this week. As you know, that's a very exciting first few weeks of the league. Now right. we're going to go rapid fire. Uh, bang, bang. I'm going to say a name. And we're Each gonna of say, us going to say something really quick. Right, we're going to say bullet points on the rookies. So now, we're very excited that the rookies came in. They're all shining because that helps everybody here. We love it. So now Changes we'll start, drafts. Changes leagues. Exactly. And it so brings we'll people out. I love it. In no particular order, JoJo Mamie. JoJo Mamie. This kid's young. All you can see is this kid getting better. Solid infielder. You go watch in the highlights. The and kid has line bad. drive hitter, slick fielder. Next, do whatever you want. Joseph Cohen. This kid's a future first rounder. Listen, he's not eyes. too far off from being a third rounder next year. Yeah, this he's real, real hands. Solid arm. He's a shortstop. He's nothing less than a shortstop. And the one thing I want to make sure that everyone understands: this kid's the most confident kid you yeah. will ever meet. Some people tell me Sunday morning I'm playing with him. Maybe tell him not to be. I want this kid to he's be He's brash confident. and he knows he's good. And he knows he's good. Next. He's good. As long as you're not egotistic. You're Ruby Sacker. Solid fielder. So he only got lucky to play left field because Very they were lucky. missing their, their the first right. few weeks. They were missing a few players. First week they were missing Elliot Saka. No, Next week they Chaz. were missing Chaz. This kid got a chance to shine in left field. I was at both all four of his games. This kid doesn't miss a beat. He gets on every ball. Right. He's he got to make a diving catch in crunch time. The kid's awesome. Quick, quick. Over the shoulder. The kid's awesome. Yeah, left he field. really had his opportunity to play, which worked out great. Because I don't know if he would have saw the time today early in the season, and it worked out great. So Ruby Saka. Not much of a bat. No, he, has so to work he actually on has no bat whatsoever from what yeah. I'm seeing. So he's he has to the work elbow. On he's got to, yeah, maybe the bat's got to get a little bit better, but he earned himself a spot in left field, and that's valuable. True. And Next. he's got speed, too. Next, Ellie Harari. Ellie Harari. So some people will say he's not a rookie. He is a rookie. He only played four, three and a half games last right. year. Right, so he definitely qualifies as a rookie in the league this year. Um, the first few weeks, as you saw in the highlights, he had a bomb all the, over the left fielder's head. Boy, could hit. Uh, he's, he's a, a real, real hitter. And he's a real second base. Mixed mixed, no, well, the first few weeks, he had a mixed results. I right. think he could play second base well. I think so, too. And he's a great, great teammate. He's playing with his brother, David Harari, who I think... Is the captain of the year right now. I love the way so he conducts his team. So far, so good. Team. He's in first place. You can't Forget, miss I'm that. not even talking about his record. I love the way he conducts his team. Love it. Next, uh, Yosef Safdie, also a rookie. Rookie. Again, he only played two two games last year. Right. Um, this kid could hit. 
flat out could hit, but the jury's out on him. God, right I think field. I think the jury already made a decision. I don't think he could play right field. Too it's very hard. early. It's very early. Um, he may not see right field because when Fark is there, he probably won't. But right, I think Bobby might best, go to right. Their best bet with him is uh, sneak him in at short center, see if he can play there a game. Maybe uh, let him hit because he can rake. We know that he really can. He goes to all fields. Next, Ben Kane. Ben Kane. So I saw him. You didn't have a chance to see him yet. Very skinny guy. Good legs. Very good infielder. He has good legs. He has good legs. Very nice legs. Okay. Wearing shorts. Okay. okay. He's also fast. Um, he has goes, good legs. goes goes back on pop ups very well. Uh, he made two nice pop-up catches. The only thing about him on the infield is, he, he, look, maybe it was only week one. He's got a weak arm, but he's got great hands. I put him between first and second. That's something you could pick up. You know, you can learn better. So, you're yeah, right. Throw the ball better. I think the next one there. I'm going to say right now is probably the biggest shocker of the year, yes. and that's Jackie Cohen. Jackie Cohen on the Balbinos team also was it's only two games. I understand that. It was only two games, but from the two games we saw... There was maybe like nine balls hit his way, Even and more. the kid is a whiz at shortstop. Right now, the only guy we came up with is, right now, I'll call him after the two weeks, is Ray Ordonez. Ray Ordonez, Omar Vizquel, the kid is He's got so a damn good. It was only one week, but I think he is a top defensive shortstop after watching it. Not only in his the league, arm, I think he, at all the leagues that we play in, unbelievable. he's up there with the... Again, okay, two games. Let's temper, two games. The, We're gonna temper, temper the excitement over We've here. We've seen butt. him play a great second and a very strong third, but it's two games at short. He's got a solid arm. Next he's one we very talk confident, about. but he's got a hit. Ne- yeah, we'll see. Next we'll one see. we'll talk about is there's mixed reviews on him. I've heard he's a really good outfielder, and I heard some people say, eh, it's Stanley Cohen. So we both right. This is talking I don't want to say who we talked to, but in the beginning of the season, we found out that this kid's the best guy to have in right field in the whole league. And then he was on the trading block. You know he was being compared to? He was being, being being compared to former league member Joey Levy. Yes. He said he's a really solid right. outfielder. In, in his younger days. Right. right. And he's not an out. He could play. And then all of a sudden you hear other reports. He's not making notice. plays and guess out what? there. We'll find out soon enough. Yeah, because that team's going to need him. And he's a rookie that, if he holds his own, would be love to the have. The next guy you're a big fan of, that's Saul Ancona. Yeah, this kid is big. Big fan. The word big should always be used when you talk about Saul Ancona. He could flat out rake. Really? He's really a first baseman. But in the league, you know we have me older guys always in the bet first. Remember Edmund Dweck back in the day? Well, so Edmund's playing in the line of and He's playing unbelievable. I'm saying that's the guy he reminds me of in his rookie year. So I think he has more power than Edmund Dweck. That's very sick. Edmund Dweck's a big, girthy guy, but more of an opposite field, line drive type hitter. This kid, Solon Cohen, has got crazy power to right center field. I've seen him do it on many occasions, whether it was in high school, whether it was YMSL. He has a lot of power. He's a great teammate, young, happy kid. Next guy we're going to talk about is somebody where truth, uh, I don't know what to expect. It's Ralph Chira. We know he's an athlete. We so, know he's blazing fast. And we also know he picked up softball just a few years ago. Yeah, so the thing about Ralph, that's very funny. You'll see him at weddings. The kid will do handstands and flips. He goes surfing. Like I said, he picked up softball. This kid, when he was in the YMSL, he could run so fast. And you said it took, it took him a few weeks to get uh, you know, to acc- figure acclimated it out. To, the, to the position. If this kid played from when he was younger, oh my gosh, it could have been amazing. You know what? He's not old. How old is no, he? No, he's not old at all. I think he's young 20s. Yeah, and so. he hits the ball, from what I remember, really, really hard. Next so, guy. I'm very excited for Ralph Jones. Next guy we're talking about, we've got another brother of Dave Arari. It's Morris Arari. So I didn't get to see him much. They didn't really give him that much of an opportunity yet to show what he could do. But I saw that he my hit game, the ball he, well, really once hard. Uh, nice shot. Yeah, and Tom made a nice catch on him. He, he's going to have to get better. He's going to find his niche. Well, I think they got to give him another opportunity to actually see what he could do, give him yes. a stronger look. But He's again, also young, and it's in the blood. The Harari's look right, good. We know Raymond's a great hockey player, also played good softball back right. in the day. Yeah, David David Raymond. Ellie. David's so. great. Ellie's great. So we'll see. I think I think Morris, if he's anything like his family, he's definitely going to pick ball. something up. Next guy we'll talk about, probably the best teammate. I don't want that to make you think he's not a good actual player, but that's Jabba. That's Jack Bader. Jack Bader. Well, so, he plays amazing defensive catch. So we know he can catch. And I know I played with him last year in the spring. I know he's a good line drive hitter to all fields. He has that very even swing bat. And he also is a big RBI guy clutch. I watched him at four or five at bats. He's batting late in that lineup, which helps that pirate team. And he could hit. He could. And the last two guys, we're going to group them together because they're part of the expansion Pawtucket Brewer team, is Mikey Shama and Mo D. Okay, so, so Mikey Shama, Mikey Shama is very interesting. No, it's deceiving because when you look at the kid, he doesn't look like he knows how to run. He looks He's short. Like, he looks, no, he just doesn't look athletically able to run. And right. then all of a sudden, he puts the ball on the bat, 
and the kid is blazing down the first baseline. You're like, huh? He comes down the first baseline, I think, fastest in the league. No, it's not. I think not time. Maybe I, not time fastest. But the kid ever. is, it's, and you look at him like, how did that just happen? There was that play that first week we saw him. There was a ground ball to short. The guy picked it up, threw him out, and he was safe by and, two steps. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'll tell you what, it makes sense. Listen, he did strike out a couple times this past week in the play game, but also in a big money spot when Maxi did intentionally walk the guy before him to get to him. Uh, in the top of the ninth, he hit the RBI to take the lead in the top of the ninth. It would have been yeah, the from, sweep go-ahead. From what I heard, there was some uh, choice. No, no, I'll, I'll actually go over it real quick. So Maxi Deed said, uh, walk this guy to get to this kid batting 10. This kid batting 10 struck out three times tonight. Wow. And all of a sudden, the kid got up and hit a rope shot to the left center field gap. Got to first base, and he had some choice words for Maxi D. You gotta <laughs> love the rookie with some balls to do that. I love it. He said, I love it. He said I'm clutch, you're not. That is exact quote. Maxi D said, turned to him and goes, What's your name? I never heard of you before. And then all of a sudden they exchanged, they had to separate him. It was very exciting. Well, well I heard when Maxi D got the game winning hit, he turned around and had some words that were He might have repeat. flipped a bird or two. Okay. But whatever. Listen, I'm not going to point no fingers. He ended up coming to clutch himself. Uh, and then we'll go quickly to Mo D. He only played one week, week one. This week he couldn't make it. He had, a, 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 I think, a relative party he had. Okay. And uh, from what we saw, he is pound for pound. One of the best athletes. I would, I would, I would compare him to the David Farka type of guy. Okay, so we know this kid basketball wise. Everybody he's an talks athlete. About. He's, a, he's spiky son. Of course, right. he's, a great he's one of the best player. basketball players. In and the as we saw in shortstop, the kid can make the plays. He's a play. good hitter. Is he as smooth as shortstop as I thought he'd be? Maybe it's early in the season. I think you got to give him time. You give him time. But he made every play. Didn't look as smooth as I thought. The one thing he's that's got a good the body. Question. We no, know no, he has the arms. We know he has the arms. He likes to show he has the arms. Yeah. As we call him, Mo Guns Dweck. And the one thing we'll question, the one thing I'm going to point out is I was at both their games. Week one, maybe it was just the first week and the chemistry wasn't strong. But week two, when he wasn't there, the chemistry was a lot less tense. Again, I don't know if it's because he was there or not. But just from an early on standpoint, it looks like so, he might not be great for chemistry. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I so this, is, this is something very interesting because when it comes to softball, obviously talent wins a lot of times. All the time. But chemistry is a tremendous thing to win these games. Yeah, so it's a big I, it thing. Just, it's and it's not, like they're getting, it's, it's not like they got to hurt defensively because Sham is a great shortstop. He played last well, year. Well, having Modi, if he plays short and you have Sammy Sham up the middle, forget about well, it. Even at third and so right. Play. Either way, they're, they're a talented squad, but I think yeah. chemistry wise, I think just. Tone down the intensity. It might gotcha. be a little better for him. But yeah, have him third in the lineup. The kid's that, a big hit. That game. rounds up our 14 rookies we have. Very also, uh, we're looking forward to having a really exciting following week we're going to have. Well, the matchup is a World Series from last year matchup. The Angels with Isaac Norwood as captain against Michael, not Sabon, uh, Melech Solomon. Right. With the Padres, right, the formerly the, Belbinos, right, the former so Belbinos. We so can't wait to watch that matchup. That's going to be exciting. We know every time uh, Norwood and not Sabon lock horns, it's always a, a doozy. There's always something. And from what I hear, the Belbinos, the Padres, have something up their sleeve uh, regarding the uniforms. Instead uh, of going through, I don't, I don't know if it'll be ready in time. Uh, we'll if see. It is. It'll but be also, I just want to point out one thing before we uh, wrap this up because we got to go is. Last year in the World Series, after Norwood injured Michael Cohen, uh, their, their entire team, I have inside sources, were begging Tuna to throw at Norwood to change the complexity of the game. We thought this would never come up again because Tuna wasn't on the team. Right, and now that he's traded, I also know from inside sources that they're pushing Tuna to actually throw at Norwood with the first pitch uh, when he faces him. If you had to put the chips on the table, would Tuna do it or not? The truth is, I don't think Tuna has the cojones to throw at Norwood. I think he respects him too much. I think he's a little bit too scared. I don't know. They have Ancona on the other side. He's a big guy. I don't know. But Michael Solomon could hold his own. If there's a bench clear and brawl, we're both going to be there. No, if there's bench clear and brawl, we're letting him brawl. Oh, baby. So, listen, blood is great for highlights. It's awesome. Uh, either way, we're looking forward to uh, an exciting week. Uh, thank you for viewing this. Uh, we know we're the only show in town. Uh, websites always updated every single day. Those highlights are ridiculous. Because and guess what? Even if they were the only highlights in town, they're still ridiculous. Yeah, they're still ridiculous. Um, again, we're looking forward to Shabbat Shalom all, and uh, can't wait to see more interviews of all you guys. Have a great weekend.